Welcome back to, to the program. We're talking sports business here, and um, you're watching Plus TV Africa. With me in the studio today is um, Mr. Shola Ayukbeku, um, the former executive chairman of the Lagos State Sports Commission. There's a lot the man has been telling us, and there's a lot I still want to extract from him. Shola, look, you said that Lagos is building eight um, stadia. Yeah, sports uh, facilities, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Which is the point I wanted to come to, right? Is it stadiums for football? Nope. Or it's um, sports arenas for different sports? They're all multipurpose. All multipurpose. All. And they're community based. Okay. So what that means is, because of the time and the fact that we went to use, convert from the construction to use very quickly, mm. we said that they had to be community based and they are growable. Mm. So, for example, I mean, just picture the typical high school sports facility in america mm. they are not they're not it, it, yeah many of them are massive state and other mm. but the average ones are about how many maybe 2005 to 5000 capacity uh, stadia they are they have um, they have areas that are still developable so they can be expanded mm. but they have all the basic things there there's a football field okay. there's lawn tennis there so what we did was uh, for those eight stadia we spread the facilities that are playable um, um, according to the areas they are in. So, for example, in Nepal, you will find a swimming pool. Okay. But you won't find one in, uh, uh, for example, in, um, what's it called now, in Bagada. Why is that? Because you know, Ekwe has water. Okay. And they are more naturally inclined to riverine or water based sports. Oh, that's, that's so, smart. That's yeah. Smart. So, so that was done for all the eight. Mm. And, um, and, and uh, like I, as I said, five will be completed this year. And mm. these are scheduled to finish this Those year. are programs that you drove when you were in yes, government. Yes, when I was in oh, government. Cool. And, um, and, and the other three should be finished by next year. And, mm. it and including the renovation of uh, Tesne uh, Balogun Stadium. So, yeah. so that was the thinking behind it. Mm. And what was the whole idea? There was also a program that we built, that we, that we designed. We found out that, I mean, regularly many former sportsmen or sports administrators, after they retired, they were doing nothing. Mm. And they had no form of income. Um, they were always returning to the commission to find ways of asking for money mm -hmm. just to survive. I said, look, how can we integrate this number of people? back to the system where they'll be useful and system and they can generate income yeah, from there. Some, and so, yeah. so the plan, the whole plan is that when these stadia are, are complete or facilities are complete, in various sports, they act as the, the preliminary scouts. So it's open. Everybody come to play. Hmm. There'll, be, there'll be equipment, there'll be everything that they can use and then they can begin to support talent at a very young age. Hmm. And these guys who are already experienced in, in, um, in their field before they retire, they be able to say, oh, there's a database that will be drawn up, uh, membership for, for different uh, people who participate, and then by the time you identify talent, they can now start going through the system of the state. Mm. And that way, you, have, you create a pipeline where talent can be developed in each area rather yeah. than coming to the center always yeah. before they get developed. It's, it's, it's a good thing that um, you talked about. I quite like that, your, your idea, your, the strategy of thinking, you know, design facilities to the strengths of the, of the communities yeah. that you're, you're looking to develop. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, you talked about swimming. Um, Lagos has a lot of water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't have swimmers. We do. What, what I, I know you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Historically, we've not had swimmers. Swimmers. So what can be done? Because look, I tell people that look, taking a football team to the Olympics to go and look for a gold medal, you, you sponsor 30, 35 people. To go and look for one gold medal. You may never get it. <laughs> Whereas one swimmer can win you four, four five, five, six gold medals. So why, me, we need to rethink these things. Let me, let me assure you, Lagos State is ahead in that as well. Okay. We, are, we already have, I mean, Lagos State was behind, I mean, admittedly, in all that. Mm. Because um, the focus also was on steam sports and all that. But mm. these last four years, we changed a lot of all that thinking. Mm. And I see the thing is, you can't be an expert in everything. Mm. But the areas where the resources are staring you in the face. Mm. Maximize the potential of those resources yeah. and turn things around for, 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 your, for, your, for your good. Yeah. So let them take it through a, 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 some, some steps we took. Mm. Now, the two biggest um, sports events in Nigeria, the National Sports Festival mm. and the National Youth Games. Mm. And the, the Sports Festival is held every two years, mm. Youth Games every year to aid development, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And um, at at the National Sports Festival, which is a senior level, mm. Lagos, I can't remember when last we won any medals in swimming. Mm, mm. And we've never won the event. So mm. by the time we came on, uh, we, looked, we, we assessed the whole 
um, composition of, of the contingent that you typically goes. Mm. And we found that in 2019, we still had <laughs> athletes who are con competing for the state that have been going to National Sports Festival since 1988. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we, 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 had a, yeah. we had a survey done and found that we, the average age of our athletes were 40. Wow. It was 40, yes. So their productive time had long gone. Long gone but because fine. they were part of the system, mm, mm, they were how to the 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 system. System. the main system. And so without any formal training, yeah. they, once they were finished as athletes, they just translated to become coaches. <laughs> <laughs> and by so you are listed as an athlete today by next year you are a coach yeah so what we did was it was a very tough decision to take yeah but we had to take it so we yeah. tried to de-age the the state contingent okay and of course you can imagine the kind of commotion they cost yeah yeah but we did it and we were very very <laughs> very very brutal about it and so by the so the 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 first post festival then had had was too close we couldn't do it for that one yeah but the next one that came with the age and the average age was just a little over secondary school age about 18, oh, 18 wow. or 19 years mm, mm. and we came third or was it wow. fourth and, uh, and wow and so we analyzed the the data we found out we realized that we had more female athletes winning medals than we had the males okay we had younger female athletes than we had younger males Okay. And so, and we looked at the at the different sports that were giving us um, the medals, and actually eating development, athletics, and all that. And we tried to do some partnerships because you see, government can do everything, hmm. but government can lend a hand, and person can lend a hand in different ways, and we can come together and make things Something stronger out of it. Oh, okay, so I I think that's really um, that's an inevitable inevitable um, path that we have to to travel yeah. do you understand government and private sector coming together and crucially data yeah data is if you ask me yeah people say government should in invest in sports oh, grassroots yeah, sure. and all exactly. that it's good but i'll tell you if you want to drive sports business in this country if i was in the government yeah. and it was my say so yeah. i would invest i'll get a, a pwc or kplg yeah. or nielsen get me numbers and get me data yeah. real data that people can work with that you can take around the world and people would yeah. recognize as a that's how we did the stadia we have the population figures from from the last population yeah. and we just had the ratio multiplication yeah. and and then from restriction for voters for elections and we used that to to, to decide where we locate our our stadia yeah okay so cities. joining us to you know I, I spoke with our next guest um uh, earlier on 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 radio uh and um, we talked about what can be done in sports and uh, and she i she raised data as as um, an issue that needs yeah. to be tackled yeah. you've done so yourself mm -hmm. i believe so 100 percent uh so let's let's bring her on and and then um okay. and then uh share get some of her insights into how to develop sports in this country uh, do we have aisha on the line please Okay, we okay. So we're trying to get uh, Aisha on the line. What be, before she gets on 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 onto the program? Sure. There's a question I want to l ask you. You know, quick, quickly. Lagos State has done really poorly in in football. Why? You do well in other sports, but football. What do you mean poorly? Do you know that in the 53 or four years of the league, you, Lagos clubs have only won the league two three times. Yeah, but my question is, so what does Lagos government has got to do with um, club teams? We're not sponsoring any club teams. It's not, it's a private, it's a privately driven yeah. uh, sector. And Lagos State is not involved as a state. Oh, okay, so fine. So other states are sponsoring clubs, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying you should go that direction, yeah? But the point is, is, it, is, it, is the government missing a trick or, or two by completely distancing itself from, from um, Lagos State football clubs? Are you, are you, I mean, when you look at it now, they're sporting Lagos in, in, in MPFL. Mm -hmm. um, I think next season they're going to be joined by one or two I hope so. more Lagos United, clubs. United, yeah. yeah. Yes, Inter, uh, Madiba, I think. Ah, yeah, they, they can, yeah they can. depending on how they finish. Anyway, so yeah, right. mm. they might join, you know, so that when clubs play in Lagos, it's big business for, for Lagos. Job creation and all of that. Don't you think, for instance, maybe you guys should have, you guys should, um, support some of these privately run clubs because they're competing against government clubs that have endless resources. 
I, I disagree. Um, okay. But you're not entirely correct by saying government stands away. Okay. Oh, no, government oh, oh. So, please hold this up. We have Aisha now. And then we okay. Can. Hello, Aisha. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, good afternoon. Aha, now we have you. You know, uh, so how are you? Fantastic. I hope you're well. Sorry? I said I'm fantastic. I hope oh. you're well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm better now, actually. <laughs> okay, so uh, we, we were talking about, we've been talking, I don't know if you've been following the program, but basically we got to the point where we had to, um, we're talking about data, you know, and what government needs to do. Whether, no, not what government needs to do, the fact that we need data. So the question is, how do we get data? Because getting data is expensive business. How do we get the sort of data that we, we let everybody know where exactly our sports is at the moment? And then we know how, how, how to then uh, plan whatever investment, investments we want to make going forward. That's a million dollar question. How to get data is something that so many people are trying to figure out. Actually, mm. it's not, the question isn't even how, the question is what kind of data is relevant mm. to the average investor that is looking into investing mm. in sports in Nigeria, in um, identifying and recognizing the ROIs, the return on investments. Mm. My agency in particular were prioritizing data optimization and over the next couple of months, for the sports sector. Uh, our agency is sports business focused, which means we're not an NGO, we're for profit focused. Mm. But one of our priorities is also trying to uh, develop the ecosystem of Nigerian sports, which entails developing a lot of the businesses, or at the very least creating the structure for the businesses to thrive, to mm. scale, to survive. Uh, Nigeria is a very dynamic and difficult market, very unpredictable, somewhat unstable. And this makes foreign investors very nervous, very anxious. Um, you don't know exactly where your money is going and you don't know how your money is coming out. Not only that, I would say the sports industry is still very new when it comes to the business aspect of it. Mm. Uh, for too long, we have looked at sports recreationally in Nigeria, but not necessarily as a business. Mm. So what we need to do moving forward now, like our other uh, counterparts in other parts of the continent, like Rwanda, like Senegal, these are countries that are at the forefront of sports development because they have identified some of those social economic benefits and are using their tourism organizations and other organizations to prioritize sports development for their countries because they know what the benefits are. Mm. These are not countries that have bigger economies than Nigeria. They don't have our population. They don't even have our land mass. So really what is in our way and what is stopping us from harnessing the potential and the power of sports? So sports as a business is a conversation that needs to be had and needs, needs to be had now. Yeah. Okay, so you, you did a, a conference um, last week in, in Abuja, the Sports as a Business Conference, and um, um, you had, it was a well-attended event. We do a lot of talking in Nigeria, right? We, we, we do a lot of talking in Nigeria. I think it may be time to find out exactly how we, we need to move from talk to, to actually walk in the talk. Right. Uh, so, y what what came out of your conference uh, that you think would would uh, help us arrive at that destination um, quicker than otherwise? Well, the sports as a business conference was the first of its kind in recent times. Mm. Uh, you don't see too much effort from maybe some of the private sector stakeholders and some of the members of government as well to put into one room the most relevant stakeholders, the highest level of leaders in sports in, Niger in uh, the private sector as well as the public sector and maybe even uh, um, you know, the development space and other organizations. But it was very important for us to do this because uh, for the government side, you are in charge of the policies and the regulations. Mm -hmm. You don't have a direction on what sort of policies would be relevant to this sector until you actually hear from the businesses that are operating within this sector. We know that 
development in Nigeria is so much private sector driven. Private sector provides the employment, the innovations. Um, uh, we thought it was important for the, the Minister of Sports, for example, and other key individuals to be a part of this event for this purpose. And then the private sector players as well, the businesses that are actively um, uh, running uh, initiatives and innovations in Nigeria so that they are able to share their experiences and we're able to identify where the gaps are, what the problems are, and how best to cater to those problems. Uh, regarding what we were able to get out of the conference, one of the key priorities of the Sports as a Business Conference was fostering dialogue and encouraging partnership and collaboration. Um, Days leading up to the conference, we were able to sign a memorandum of understanding for a strategic partnership with Kaduna State Government, which will entail our agency going into Kaduna State and using sports to actually identify some of the social economic opportunities for the state. This means revitalizing some of their sports infrastructure, um, creating avenues for their talented individuals to be developed, to be discovered, and just bringing back what Kaduna used to be in terms of sports. Uh, we're lucky that the governor is extremely passionate about sports development in the state, so he welcomed this idea, uh, welcomed us into the state, me and my entire team, and we were able to sign this agreement. So the next steps are going to be us actually carrying out an evaluation, a very thorough one, where we understand and recognize where Kaduna is now using data to actually see how we can um, identify what the revenue opportunities are for this state, as well as other individuals, any potential investors that want to um, invest in sports in Kaduna and even Nigeria as a whole. So uh, we were also lucky to have the commitment of uh, the former governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasu Arufai, who is also the chairman of Afri Ventures Capital. And it's a venture capital uh, firm that are trying to offer young people, uh, young innovators, capital for their ideas. So he pledged support uh, of, of up to about 100 million naira for all of the youth that were in attendance of the conference uh, to come to them and to share their ideas with them and they will be able to get funding. Uh, also, Mr. Tony Patrick Koko, who is the co-founder of Sahara Energy, he also pledged his support and, um, and was present at the conference and also gave a very thorough uh, presentation on the numbers in sports globally and also what the numbers in Africa could be. So all of these individuals coming together was extremely encouraging for the theme of the day, which was sports for economic growth harnessing the revenue prospects of sports in Nigeria. So this is our goal as an agency, and this was the agenda of the Sports as a Business Conference. And we're hoping that by the next edition next year, all of the, the efforts that we've made this year, we will have something to show for it. OK. Let me, let me just ask my, um, my guest in the studio. Uh, he, he's been head of Lagos State Sports. And I'm sure you've, you've, you've been part of a lot of conferences, seminars about sports as business, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, what sense did you get that they moved, it, you know, when it comes to moving the needle, what, what, what sense did you get? Did they achieve, did, did, did you see any momentum? Um, it, it, uh, actually, before I shall to tell, mm -hmm. um, they, they know what milestones they've put in place. No, no, I'm talking about the Lagos conferences. Not oh, okay, those ones, okay. Um, yeah. You see, again, like I, I keep repeating that it's nice to have conferences, mm. but it's good to also take to have to do's taken mm. away from them. And that's something that we kept emphasizing. And just uh, uh, I think the last year, maybe 14 months mm. of, of my tenure, because we didn't really have so many conferences. We focus was on getting people to know that they could come and do things with government. Mm. And so we had quite a number of partnerships rather than focusing on conferences. Mm -hmm. and, and from there, that's what we were able to do. Like I told you, we're having about 110 events a year, okay. which, is, which, which is rare. I mean, I'm, I, I'm almost certain you'll find it in other, like those kind of numbers in any other state. So we're able to maximize things like facilities, um, people, some people's um, ideas and knowledge, drive our sessions to work better rather than collecting them to talk um, so much and tell about what they could do, okay. what we drove them to do. Okay. Yeah. Aisha, based on what you, you, you know of Kaduna State, right, um, do you think that, do you have a, um, do you have a, a foundation, is it, to work with, as in, do you have any data at all on what sports they, 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 they right now take part in, that, what sports are popular among Kaduna people? and um, what, what you can do to, to then harness whatever um, 
interest there is in the sports industry in Kaduna State? Historically, Kaduna State has actually birthed superstars uh, in, in football, soccer, and in basketball as well. Okay. But there's so many opportunities for other sports for the state as well. Mm. One thing that I think we need to do, just like Mr. Shola said about having so many conferences and not enough action, is mm. to be more intentional, first of all, for those of us that are doing the work itself. What is your intention behind the work? If you are looking for quick rewards, you are not going to get it. This is not the industry for you. Yeah. And the issue that is plaguing sports in Nigeria is people feel like talent exportation is the big money maker. Mm. And as a result of this, everybody is trying to export all of our talents. But what mm. happens to the talents that are still on home soil? Mm. What happens to the ones that are never going to be discovered, that are never going to get the opportunity to be exported? Something has to be here for them. So what we plan to actually do for Kaduna State is to first of all understand the consumer markets because we're talking sports as a business, mm. right? We're trying to create sustainability. This is a sector that has to support itself. And it's a capital intensive project wherever you look at it, whether you're talking about um, renovating an existing facility or even building smaller community sports and recreation centers or even organizing high level events. Mm. To do all of these things is very capital intensive. What is the ROI? These are things that we, first of all, we need to figure out. We need to go into the communities. We need to uh, collaborate with the uh, local leaders. We need to collaborate with the House of Representative members and their various constituencies. We need to get the, the support and the, and the uh, collaboration of the state government as well. So the work is going to be a lot. You're probably going to fight a lot of people as well along mm, the process mm. because, let's face it, one of the biggest issues that, is, that has faced sports development in Nigeria is also corruption, right? Mm. So you have to get into some of these spaces with the confidence and the conviction that you know what you're doing. You're bringing in external ideas that have worked elsewhere but to adapt it to this current market and to test it out there will be a lot of trial and error but that can't deter us you can't you can't be discouraged mr shala has been in this sector for a very long time i have a lot to learn from him so that we're just three years in now doesn't mean that in the next three years we're not going to achieve what somebody that has been around for 10 years was not able to do you just have to be able to work smarter you have to also realize that you can't do anything alone you can't do anything without financing and you definitely cannot do anything without government support so for kaduna state in particular what we want to do at the barest minimum is to bring back what was already there before to bring back the 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 ginger to bring back the passion the desire for sports and it's still in kaduna it's still there it's a very mm. vibrant space when it comes to sports I mean, and that's where it's one of the places where you really see the power of sports and its ability to unify people mm. regardless of background regardless of where you come from and what your social class is mm -hmm. sport is one of those big tools that really brings people together and you see that in kaduna um, mm. Under the administration of, of Malam Nasir Arifai, he was able to um, um, fix up the uh, Murtala Square. And now it's, 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 uh, it's uh, it modernized. It has so many sporting facilities. There's about two basketball courts there. There's a Dembe facility. There's football, AstroTurf. There's a, um, a polo. There's so many things happening there. So we have to be able to utilize spaces like this or else the investment and the efforts that he put in would just go to waste. These places will just uh, uh, become dilapidated after a couple of years. I've been around to a few of their other facilities already. Some of them are in really bad shape. If tomorrow I want to organize an event there, I have to bring in everything that I mm. need from generator mm. to yeah. light to ventilation to even water. Why is that the case? So we need to be able to create a foundation. That's what the true work is. And before you know it, things are going to... It's like an engine. Things will fall into place, businesses are going to be able to, to actually be created to, to thrive because you have given them an enabling environment for the ecosystem to function. We can, we can have merchandisers, we can have broadcasters, we can have um, sports doctors and um, those that um, uh, medics that attend events and cater to you know injuries of players and all of that. These are all of the industries that are, that are created, the jobs that are created from sports, even the engineers, the ones that create the facilities, the ones that do the brick and brick work, all of this, you know, it's an ecosystem, it's an engine. So we start small, but we also um, and keep sustainability in mind because leadership is not forever, power is not forever. Although the current governor is very passionate and very dedicated about sports, we need to make sure that we are setting a foundation that even with the next administration and the one after that, they are able to see a blueprint that benefits the state. 
that benefits the state that is able to contribute to the internally generated revenue of the state, but is also able to influence the people. That's where we talk about social economic impact, influence and impact the people. Uh, get the kids off the streets, get them engaged somehow in sports programs so that when the development partners come and they want to organize programs in the grassroots communities, there's already a foundation there. They, we've already had it present. Sports is already thriving and existing. You should go to countries like Senegal. There's a reason the, 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 the first time I went to Senegal was when they had just won AFCON. And when I went there, it took me about two days to realize why they won AFCON because sports is deeply embedded in their society, in their in their communities. You know, at 5 p.m., you see people jogging, you see people training. It's embedded in their society. It's there. It's vibrant. So we need to bring that back in Nigeria. And our agency is just playing a little part in, in that very big picture, but we definitely can't do it alone. Okay. Um Sorry about that. Um, uh, okay. So, Aisha, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, one last question before I speak with, before I um, uh, bring on um, Shola to this. You said, what I want to find out, right, is what do you think is driving the, pro the thought process in Kaduna, in the Kaduna government or the, uh, of the governor, for instance? In partnering with you, is it is this coming to Kaduna to be to to set up sports as a, as big business as potentially big business or set up sports first as an engagement activity? It's 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 both of those things. Um, the governor, first of all, expressed his desire to curb some of the existing issues that they have in. Uh, Kaduna State, which is also issues that is impacting uh, the North as a whole. One of those being the drug problem. We have our youth, um, unfortunately, heavily plagued uh, by the drug issue, by the Almadri issue, mm. uh, illiteracy. We have so many kids on the streets. Uh, the governor has identified that sports is going to be an opportunity to get these youth engaged. You don't know where talent is hiding. But if you don't have the facilities, the state of the art facilities, the quality coaching, the right representation, uh, branding services, all of these things working, how are you going to be able to harness any talent? You're going to identify the talent and then you're not going to know what to do with it. Mm. So he wants to be able to, for sports to be a solution, first of all, uh, for some of the existing problems there. And then second of all, he wants for the revenue op uh, opportunities to also show themselves through us. We are coming in as the consultants, we're coming in as the experts, who are also going to be working with other experts to identify how we can generate revenue for the state through sports. So mm -hmm. this is what the intention is. We have a range of services as an agency that we offer and uh, depending on um, the steps that we plan to take with Kaduna after our, our survey of the state, we would know exactly which ones to begin with and the right strategies to adopt. That, that's, that sounds very interesting, and I, I wish you the very best in this um, journey. Sports is something we really need in this country. You know, I, I usually tell people that all of the progressive civilizations on our planet prioritize sports. Um, so we, we need to prioritize sports to be able to get in step with, what, with what's happening globally. Shola, um, you're back in the private sector. Yeah. Um, so what's... What should we be looking forward to from you? You also here. I'm, I'm putting together an, an event. It's unique. It's not. I don't think it's been done before in this part of the world. Okay. And also, I'm, I'm also part of one new thing that's also unfolding. Uh, I can't let out the beans yet because um, there are some confidentiality issues. Yeah. But shortly, in the next couple of months, it will, it will, it will begin to come to light. And I'll let you know. Okay, no wahala. Mm -hmm. Aisha, please, can we have a last word from you quickly? Because we, we have to take this, bring this home now. Mr. But, Shala, I'm going to be disturbing yeah. you, sir. Uh, <laughs> you know you're my person now. <laughs> I'm going to be disturbing you, sir. You're going to see me in Lagos very, very soon. We are, you know we are... You know we know where we meet. We're, uh -huh. <laughs> we're, we're co-board members on in the Nigerian American Football Association, yeah. another fantastic initiative that yeah. uh, trying to promote uh, 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 American football in Nigeria, which is a growing, a fast-growing sport and has been included into the Olympics. So Nigeria yeah. needs to produce a team very soon. So very soon, yeah. through the uh, through NAFA, we are going to uh, soon, hopefully, be 
uh, putting a team forward that can represent Nigeria and bring okay. home the medal. So I'm definitely right. going to be partnering with the likes of Mr. Shola. Partnership is everything, everywhere I go. And I travel a lot. In fact, I'm going to Rwanda next month to go and hustle some partners to work with in Nigeria. Right. But okay. everywhere I go. <laughs> everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I, I sound the alarm oh, of oh. partnership. Is we need like-minded individuals to work with us. We cannot do the work alone because people have tried and failed in the past, and there's a reason for that. But oh. while we have the attention oh. of the government, while we have the support and the collaboration of some state governments, now is the time to oh. not drop the ball, to not oh. lose okay. that opportunity. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Aisha. I have to cut you here. No don't, don't worry about it. There's, I know that we have not even done 1% of the 100% that we should do, yeah. right? Which yeah. means that I'm going to be calling on you again uh, from time to time uh, so that we can keep the conversation going and hopefully bring the much needed growth um, that our sports industry needs uh, in Nigeria. Shola, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank you, Aisha. I'd like to thank you, Shola, for, Pleasure is mine. for making um, time to, to, to honor this invitation, right? A pleasure. And so, gentlemen and ladies, um, we've come to the end of uh, an, another edition of Sports Business with Ofo Izaga. Next week, um, look forward to another big package. We've, we've got some really strong um, guests coming, coming in as well. Um, so, until we meet again then, uh, be productive, be good, and, and stay safe.